Namaste, Namaskar, Vanakam, Sastriyakal, and welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. You guys know we've done a few things on um, our Jermon Kashmir, Article 370 and 35A. We've done some Christine Fair. We've done some, uh, you know, a few different things. And part of it is our love for India and our stand with India. And part of it is, you know, to spread the word out. And so this was, um, came from the U.S., from the Indian, hold on, look at his name. Uh, the Indian's ambassador to the United States, Harish Vardhan Shringla, has said Article 370 was meant to be a temporary in nature and should have been abrogated a long time ago. He explained that adding that due to a legislative process was followed by the government in doing away with the provisions. Seeking, seeking to counter what he called speculation, half-truths, and untruths peddled in the media, primarily in the U.S., he said 90% of the Kashmir Valley is restriction-free and there's no communication gap. So he's like saying here in the U.S., people are getting wrong information about it, and this is his way of spreading the word. So my husband found this on the news, and then he was sad when it only had 30,000 views in five days. The biggest, I want to say, topic in India about India has only 30,000 has views only 30,000 views. And I know we're a reaction channel, but you guys know how much we love India. Being half Indian, Anjali is, and, and myself being married to an India, it's our home away from home. And we support it wholeheartedly. And it just, you know, yeah. some of these other reaction channels that... You know, do Bollywood. They do all the things that you ask Movies. them to do, that, that you pay them to do. And, um, you know, 100,000 views, 500,000 views, a million views. But and, they don't do the important stuff. Right. And they don't always do the important stuff. That really is about the country. Yeah. That's about your backyard and um, supporting you guys. So you know that we are always supporting With you. you. Yeah. Whether this channel is here or not, we are supporting you. So, in our support, we want to spread this word. So, whether you tweet this reaction to his speech on um, clarifying some things about Jammu and Kashmir that have been in the news here in the U.S. and I'm around the world, so we know um, the Pakistani Prime Minister is coming here, and he's going to talk on Jammu and Kashmir, and this is. You know, we want to make sure there's enough word out there. You know, if you don't speak up, nobody can hear. And right now, he is saying nobody's listening. They're only hearing one side of the story, and it's not the truth. It's half-truths, and it's not the whole truth. And if you only hear what's being said, you don't hear the whole story, you're only going to take the one side. So tweet our response, tweet watch his, his video, watch it, but it should have as many as some of these reaction videos on these movies or music, and then, then it does right now. So yeah. um, we're spreading the word. So this is not going to become a news channel. Please no. don't think that. We love learning. That's our... We like love temples, learning about like India, our thing. the different temples. places in India, but part of being part of India is doing everything about India. So this is our way to help spread the word, and I hope you guys help spread the word too, because yes. right now they're only hearing one side of the story, and unfortunately it's not the correct side, and it's not necessarily the Indian side. So please help spread the word. Yes any way you can and send us more links if you want us to react to stuff um it's what we're here for so after that let's start it up so this video is called half truths untruths being peddled by u.s media on jammu and kashmir yes start it up namaste and good morning I want to speak to you on certain recent developments uh, concerning the state of Jammu and Kashmir in India. As you're aware, the government of India has 
taken certain steps to administratively reorganize the state of Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories and also to abrogate Article 370 of the Indian Constitution. Now, over the past few weeks, we have seen a great deal of speculation, um, some peddling of half-truths, untruths, factually incorrect information that has emanated in the media, uh, primarily in the United States. And the purpose of my conversation today is really to try and bring to you the facts of the matter, which are as follows. In 1947, the state of Jammu and Kashmir, the erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir, acceded to the Union of India by depositing the instrument of accession in favor of India and as such became a part of the Union of India. The uh, recent decision of the Government of India relating to the administrative reorganization of the state of Jammu and Kashmir is uniquely applicable to uh, territory within India, which is the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Um, an administrative reorganization uh, has, uh, is uh, an internal matter within India. It has taken place several times in the past. And this is the twelfth time that uh, the, the government of India is going in for an administrative reorganization. Uh, this particular process does not in any way impinge on the boundaries of the state of Jammu and Kashmir or the international line of control. And therefore, as I said, is an internal matter which does not have any impact on any other country. Now, what does this mean? What does an administrative reorganization mean? It means that the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir has been bifurcated into two parts and two union territories. One is the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, which will have its own legislative assembly, elected legislative assembly, its own chief minister, and a union territory of Ladakh, which will have its own elected council. At the same time, uh, the abrogation of Article 370 has been undertaken uh, through uh, due legislative process, which has involved the introduction of two bills in Parliament, uh, which were voted upon. The government, uh, the bill received a two-thirds majority. This was signed by the President, became an act, and therefore went into effect. Now, um, the uh, Article 370 is really an anachronistic provision in the Constitution. It was explicitly and uniquely temporary in nature. Uh, it was introduced to really smoothen the integration of Jammu and Kashmir into the Union of India in 1947. Uh, for the past 70 years, it has remained in, uh, in, within the constitution. It should have really been abrogated uh, a long time ago. But it really uh, is uh, a question of the government uh, taking that step uh, with the concerned majority that is involved. And, uh, and I think uh, is something that was seen to be uh, very much uh, necessary in the circumstances and I will explain why. Now, uh, what uh, does the uh, measure entail? I mean, what is the difference uh, between the earlier uh, state of Jammu and Kashmir and uh, the recent decision to make this into uh, a union territory and scrap Article 370? It really means that uh, the people of Jammu and Kashmir would have the opportunity to be provided with good governance, uh, social justice, economic development. Uh, many of these uh, areas of, uh, let's say, uh, of, of proactive and positive legislation by the parliament in India, by the government of India, did not apply to the state of Jammu and Kashmir because of Article 370. Uh, for example, the right to employment, the right to information, the Domestic Violence Act, which uh, was designed to protect women, uh, did not apply to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, women were particularly discriminated because women could not participate in grassroots panchayat level elections. Uh, women could not inherit property if they married a non-resident of the state. While if a resident of Jammu and Kashmir was a man married a woman who was non-resident, he could inherit property. And at the same time, as I said, the Domestic Violence Act uh, did not apply to Jammu and Kashmir and therefore, the women of Jammu and Kashmir were not protected under recent and more proactive legislation applying to women all over India. At the same time, uh, affirmative action programs that applied to traditionally disadvantaged communities, uh, and there are many such traditionally disadvantaged communities in Jammu and Kashmir. You have the Gujars, you have the Bakarwals, you have other communities who did not benefit from social and uh, uh, affirmative action programs uh, in the state, as they did in the rest of India. Um, but what is most important is that economic development 
did not reach the grassroots levels. Uh, over a period of time, uh, the special provisions of the Constitution under Article 370, as I said, uh, prevented uh, a number of uh, positive uh, measures that have applied to efficient delivery of socio-economic uh, justice. The rest of the country did not apply to Jammu and Kashmir. A lot of the funds intended for development did not percolate down to grassroots levels. In the last 15 years alone, uh, the government of India had allocated $40 billion for the development of Jammu and Kashmir and very little of this reached the grassroots levels. In fact, that created uh, a moribund economy, lack of employment, lack of opportunities, discouraged investments in entrepreneurship in the state and led uh, to a feeling of despondency among younger generations which was taken advantage of, uh, of by Pakistan through cross-border terrorism, through incitement to violence and through uh, means that uh, ensured that uh, the young and uh, the uh, residents of Jammu and Kashmir were kept in uh, you know, a cycle of uh, some unrest and violence. And today we have the unique opportunity to address this issue. At the end of the day, um, these act the actions by the government are designed to ensure that the people and the residents of Jammu and Kashmir, particularly the younger people, who are the majority of the state, have a bright future. They can look forward to a modern, progressive Jammu and Kashmir in keeping with the economic development and the social uh, progress and development that has been achieved in the rest of India. Uh, now, how do we go about doing that? One of the, one of the very immediate steps that the government is taking is to fill 50,000 vacancies that have existed in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, in the Jammu and Kashmir government uh, that uh, would provide employment for people in the state, the younger people in the state. Uh, there are a number of uh, other organizations that would be recruiting proactively from Jammu and Kashmir. At the same time, uh, a decision has been taken by the National Agricultural Federation to uh, purchase apples from Jammu and Kashmir. They've already allocated $800 million for this purpose. This will improve the lives of 700,000 farmers, apple farmers in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, you also have an investment conference that the state of Jammu and Kashmir is organizing in October that will bring together some of the uh, large uh, conglomerates in India uh, that have an interest in investing in the state. Uh, keep in mind that the real strengths of the state have not been exploited. What are the strengths of the state? Uh, they are tourism, uh, they are horticulture, they are the film industry, they are the handicraft industry. These are the areas that will be get a boost through investments, uh, through um, uh, you know, purchase of uh, properties, uh, commercial activity. And I think this will uh, definitely spur not only economic and commercial activity, but also small and medium businesses. Now, what we are talking about and what the Prime Minister spoke about is a vision that Jammu and Kashmir will be a hub, a global hub for tourism in the next five years will develop in a very rapid way, as I said, which will bring them on par with the high levels of growth experienced by the rest of India and will give uh, prospects to the young to, uh, towards a bright future. Now, what is the situation today? I think there has been a lot of speculation also on the precautionary and preventative measures taken by the local administration uh, to ensure that the law and order situation on the ground is secure. Now, the reason why these preventive steps were taken was to ensure that the uh, positive steps taken by the government should not be scuttled on account of, uh, again, incitement, on account of uh, vested interests from across the border, ensuring that uh, positive benefits uh, should not go to the state, that uh, these, uh, this uh, ray of sunshine, ray of hope for the rest of the state should not be uh, delivered. And, uh, and I think it is in order to make sure that that did not happen, that certain steps were taken. But I'm happy to tell you that a lot of these uh, steps that were taken are being, is be are being very, very rapidly dismantled. Uh, today, you have a situation where you have 24-7 supply of water, electricity, sanitation, cooking gas at homes, LPG being delivered to homes. You have primary, middle and senior schools that are open, government offices are open. Traffic is normal in almost all districts uh, of Jammu and Kashmir, barring a few. Uh, I think 91% of the Kashmir Valley has been opened up to normal traffic. Uh, it is only in a 9% of the Kashmir Valley that has certain restrictions. Uh, at the same time, um, landlines, 26,000 landlines have been opened up in the Kashmir Valley. People can talk to their relatives, people have communication. There is no communication gap whatsoever between 
people in the valley and the relatives in the other parts of India and other parts of the world. Cellular telephony is opened up in uh, in a majority of districts in Jammu and Ladakh and as well as the Kashmir uh, Valley. There are certain areas where uh, there are still some restrictions but the idea is to move towards a situation where uh, these restrictions are also uh, removed. The flights are operating normally, night flights are also happening, uh, truck and bus services are fully operational, uh, apple growers are exporting the apples out of the state, uh, horticulture is going out of the state. So essentially we are looking at a situation that is increasingly normal, there is no communication gap. Some questions have been raised about the availability of medical services and I want to put all such speculation to rest by saying that there is absolutely no disruption in uh, the availability of medical services in Jammu and Kashmir. As a matter of fact, in the month of August alone, 700,000 people have visited the outpatient departments of hospitals and 49,000 surgeries, both minor and major, have taken place in this period. There is uh, no shortage of medicines or pharmaceuticals and so the situation is normal, I repeat normal, because this is an area where a lot of our friends have expressed some concern and quite correctly so that concern should be expressed but what is important is that you should know the truth and the truth is that uh, the lives of people have not been affected in, in Jammu and Kashmir. And we are moving towards uh, trying to ensure uh, normalcy as soon as possible in view of the ground realities, uh, keeping in consideration the ground realities. Um, I once again reiterate that what our Prime Minister has said with regard to Article 370 is that the only thing it brought to the pe people of Jammu and Kashmir are secessionism, terrorism, nepotism and corruption. In a, in a widespread manner and these are those issues that would be addressed. Uh, we, we definitely believe that this is uh, something that would offer an alternative paradigm uh, to 70 years of uh, some devil's unrest and last, uh, last few decades of, uh, of a fair amount of strife which has been really a result of cross-border terrorism and incitement from Pakistan. Uh, this gives the opportunity for younger people to be diverted from uh, such incitement uh, to go into productive areas, to look forward to a bright and productive future for a modern and progressive Jammu and Kashmir. Thank you very much. So I, he had a lot of really good information. It reminds me a little bit of Christine Fair and how, you know, talking about, you know, the article and how it was put into place and how it is taken away now and just the the way the media is depicting it and making it seem like bad things are happening because they took it away, he's trying to clarify. There's, you know, been some stuff in the media here in the U.S. and I'm sure in different parts of the world, it's not depicting it as a in a positive light for India. And from his response, which, like we said, send his response on. He is saying India is pretty much taking it under its wings now and really trying to make it wholly part of India, like bringing the economy up, bringing jobs, bringing, you know, good things to that area. And so hopefully in the end it will all be good for Jim and Kashmir. So um, I think it's great that India is like willing to like help them with their like economy and their growth and their like school and how getting like jobs because I think that's like a big part of it and it seems like they didn't have very good jobs and stuff like that back so it's nice that they're like bringing it all together like helping them yeah kind of making it all it sounded like from what he said bringing up it up to date with the rest of India like yes bringing better economy bringing some government jobs bringing more jobs um having you know buying the apples from the farmers and um, bringing tourism there and, and hopefully in the next few years will become part of India like it should be as as equal as to the other states and getting just as much good things and hopefully um, will become wonderful and you know like we said before this is just our way of spreading the news because there has been a lot of fake news out there and a lot of misinformation and so this is our way of learning but also our way of spreading the word out there so whether you spread our reaction or you just spread his link um you know letting people know that it's out there it's out there and getting the indian 
word out there. I yes. feel like it's not strong enough. And um, so people are only hearing one side of the story. And in a couple weeks, you know, the Prime Minister of Pakistan is going to come here and address the UN with Jammu and Kashmir. And right now, from my understanding, is there's a lot of crap coming one-sided from the news. So we need a stronger Indian voice to be heard. So however you can spread the word, spread the word. And, you know, ask these other reaction channels to spread the word for you. The yeah. more you can get out there, the more people watch. This guy has only 30,000 views on this issue. And this is, he's speaking the truth. We've had a, um, a subscriber that said he was in Jammu and Kashmir and things are well. Like, there is a lot of news that's not true. And so that's really good to hear from, you know, our own people. So this is just us spreading the word and hopefully you guys will keep spreading the word and um so gandhi is really our huge inspiration yeah. and like they said at the bottom of this this is just about spreading truths and hopefully peaceful answers will come in the end and it's from my understanding india wants to do good for jammu and kashmir so i am hoping this is spreading some truths around and getting the word out there and like Gandhi, instead of a sit-in, I'm going to call it a talk out. So spread the word out. And the more Indian word gets out there and the more you can say about it and the more knowledge people have of the truth, hopefully when things come to be decided or people need to take sides, when it comes to India, you are part of India, whether yeah. you support Modi, whether you don't support him, whether you love our channel or don't love our channel. India is your country, so spread the truth around yeah. and let people inside and outside hear your voice. Let the whole world hear your voice. Yes. So we love India. We're part of India. And um, this is our way of getting our word out there. So. Yeah. I hope you like this. And if you like this video, don't forget to click that like button down below because the more you like, the more YouTube shows our videos. And don't forget to subscribe and join our wonderful family and spread the word. And we'll see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Bye. Bye.